This the NCB. I got a freak elite like Pablo Pete. 980, the Neo is where the Charlotte leaks. 252 for the Greenville. Hat on blue for the Tar Heels. I can edge them on this paradox. I crack foes, light the locks. We knock folks and the notch. Now I know money talks. How I can't even announce my parents' script to reach the doc. Cause when this ball point to close, my mental travel hell is spots. Like astro projection. Can I conjoint the two of us if there is no connection? But you can close section. The NCB, the NCB. The NCB, the NCB, whoa, whoa. Okay, Mr. Jackson, I love you, Mr. Jackson, for real, I do. <laughs> I almost got away if it wasn't for that goddamn Gerald Jackson and the NCB mob. I almost got away. Got to be more careful. Got to be more careful. Hold on, y'all. Let me see. I'm just trying to make sure y'all ain't dealing with this technical difficulty that we was dealing with the other night. All right. So it sounds like we work it and we in there. Shout out to everybody that's tuned in on tonight. Thank y'all so much for coming on. We live on YouTube tonight. Demand. We live on YouTube tonight. We're not on Facebook. Y'all know we be live everywhere. But we live on YouTube tonight. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. We have a lot that we need to talk about. And, you know, this live right here is just so crazy because I cannot believe that this stuff is happening. And what is happening concerning William McRae and um, his um, old so-called friend, Larry Reed. Now, let me say this to y'all. You all know that I have had William McRae, because so many people have blew, blew me up, uh, emailed me, texted me, and sent me so many messages on social media asking for me to respond uh, as it relates to uh, William and Larry Reed on live. And it was kind of to the point where people thought, I guess I wasn't going to respond, but I was. I just be, you know, busy. I don't have the time like some of these bloggers do that go live every day of the hour. I just don't have that kind of time because, you know, sometimes you got to step away from this computer and you have to, you know, go on about your life, do other stuff. You know what I'm saying? Get outside, go shopping, go out to eat, go spend time with your family, your friends, you know? So, um, I was going to get around to saying something about this now. Um, a lot of you know that Larry, I'm not Larry, but William has been over here and I've been on his platform. And we have had a friendship and, um, I just want to say that a lot of times, cause I said this on Facebook the other night, a lot of times people don't understand that. Uh, when you find out things like we have found out, um, and your friends with people or have a relationship with certain people, you find out things that you don't find out. Now, everyone has their opinion about William, um, and how he covered things and his integrity and all of these different things that he has going on online. You know, but I try not to get into that because I understand that people uh, sometimes don't like the way you cover news or bring the news or how you report your news. But um, I talked to William offline before I did this video, and I'm just going to give you a little background drop to um, where we are. So, about, okay, so y'all remember. When um, Vincent dropped that video concerning uh, Larry Reed and Larry Reed on audio recording, admitting that, you know, he did what he what Levantre Andrews said he did. Now, not necessarily coming out and saying, yeah, I did it, but he went to Vincent to try to get Vincent to help him cover up the um, molestation. And Levantre Andrews is not a secret, okay? He went to Daryl Moore, and he told his story. He went to Tasha Kay, and he told his story. And bloggers and vloggers and YouTubers, whatever you want to call yourself, 
We got on the story, covered the story. And um, William had called me. Um, I think it was like maybe a couple of days. You know, the day, let me see. Hold on, let me pull this up because I want to get my facts together. It was the day that William did the video. It was in February. It was the day that he did the video on Facebook. And it was seeming like to everybody else that William was taken up for Larry or was essentially defending Larry. Y'all remember that video? Okay. Now, I did not know. And shout out to everybody that's tuned in on tonight. I did not know that William had did that video until after I got off the phone with him. And I went up there because of the conversation that we had. And I would have, I don't record my friends. Now, I don't know if William was recording me or if he's ever recorded me, but I don't record people that I consider friends. You get what I'm saying? But William had called me after he got off live. And he had told me that he had talked to Larry Reed for the first time in over, I think he said a year or something. And he had said that Larry had offered to pay him money to go after Vincent. And I said, William, are you serious? And he was like, yeah, I mean, you know, Vincent is a sleaze bag and Vincent did this and Vincent used to do this and stuff. And I'm like, okay, but what are you going to say? How are you going to defend someone who has proof that Larry Reed is on a recording trying to get Vincent to help him cover up. And, and before y'all say, oh, Gerald, I'm going to get to all of that. William know that I'm doing this live tonight. I even offered him an opportunity to come up here, but he, he splashed on me. You know, he lashed out, but I'm going to tell y'all that I'm going, we're going to get to that. I'm just trying to let y'all know what's going on. So I said, well, William, I said, it does not matter if Vincent did cocaine. He's a powder head. It does not matter. We all know that Vincent was there and Vincent could come out here and put this stuff out against Larry Reed. And that's totally fine. We understand that. Yes, he was a part of it. I agree. Everybody else online agree vincent you may have put the truth out there that levantre has been saying that larry has done to him all along but you was there we get that we understand that but how are you going to defend larry reed in this situation i said now if you do this william you better make sure that larry reed pay you a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of money because ain't nobody going to really follow you and deal with you like that. And so he was like, well, I'm going to think about it. I'm going to think about it. So I got offline. We hung up and I said, uh, we ain't finna really fuck up his credibility and his name messing around with Larry. And I know that, and this is no shade, I know that William needs the money. And William knows he needs the money. But I just feel like start you a platform, you have good commentary. You know, a lot of people don't agree with the fact that things are dragged out, words, and you take forever to get to the point. But at the end of the day, you're not a born individual. You, you people are going to watch you. You got people on TikTok right now making money off of off of his videos, when he could be capitalizing off of his own videos and making money off of his own videos. So, I went to William's page. I was like, let me go up here and see what William done got going on because he talking about Larry done call him. To pay him to go after Vincent. So when I went up there. I watched the video. And I could not believe. What I heard. Now before I go further into that. Let me read this text message. That I sent William. Um, 
today. I got it right here. Okay. I got the test message right here. I said, uh, read this to y'all. I said, what's up? This was at 407. I said, what's up, William? So I'm reaching out because I believe in being up front with someone and not doing anything behind their back. As you may recall from my previous conversation, when you called me regarding Larry's offer to pay you to go after Vincent, I expressed my concern that this would not be a wise decision. I mentioned that such actions could damage your reputation as a journalist because you did not seek Vincent's perspective on the matter. Instead, you chose to turn it, tarnish his, rep his reputation by recycling old allegations about his alleged drug use. You mentioned that you would consider it. And to my surprise, you recently conducted an interview with Reed on social media. I was shocked when I saw it. As a journalist, engaging with someone accused of molestation is significant. And you should have addressed those allegations during the interview. The interview with Reed consisted of comfortable questions. And did not challenge him on the allegations that Levantre Andrews had made against him and or the audio recordings that uh, was released by Vincent. Another thing, Larry Reed, I said this man, but I'm telling y'all who I'm talking about. This man took down your website along with Vincent, as you mentioned in a video I have and what you told me on the phone in our conversation. Despite this, you still proceeded to do an interview with him or even begin befriend him again. I am at loss for words. People have been reaching out to me regarding my thoughts on your interview with Larry and rekindling of your friendship because they have seen you on my platform. Some people believe that I am in cahoots with you and Larry on this stuff with uh, Larry Reed um, trying to go out to Vincent. And I am not at any or at all. Okay. I said, so I will be live to discuss this, uh, your newly formed friendship with Reed. And I wanted to offer you an opportunity to come up and talk about this with me if you wish. I don't want you to feel blindsided, excuse me, blindsided or think I am being insincere, but I cannot associate myself who associates with Larry Reed, a man accused of molesting a 15 year old child, a then 15 year old child with proof. You have built a reputation for exposing pastors like Reed. So see you, excuse me. So seeing you become friends with him is embarrassing in itself. Hopefully you can come up and we can discuss, but if you choose not to, then it's okay. He says, you seem to be confused. Like I am a child should do as you say. Your attitude and tone is not the tone that I like nor would tolerate. Gerald, you certainly are no moral authority. Hmm. I, but you sold your morals for some money. I have not seen any documentation on any child molestation. And you have not seen any on Bishop T.D. Jakes either. But you ran with that lie like it was the gospel of Jesus Christ. He said, you do not like Larry, but you like Jives. He said, you took $250 from me, from me and never returned it. Then played it like it was something wrong with your cash app. Telling me that you're going to discuss me. Sir, check your attitude. And tone with me. That's what he told me. And I'm not going to go further into our conversation. Um, that I have here. But I felt like that my message to him was not that bad. And I even offered William to come up here with me tonight. So that we could discuss this. But he lashed out on me. Now, let me address some things concerning the 250 and concerning he tried to read me, but he, he can't read me. Uh, but and then let me address the job situation again. OK, I never addressed this two hundred and fifty dollars situation. OK, so a lot of people know that uh, me and William have had a relationship okay a friendship and we had a we had a situation um a while back where william had contacted me at a very short notice about four three or four days from the church of god in christ quadrillennium election or something like that and he wanted me to make him a website because i used to do graphic design i don't do it no more right I used to really be into, I just throw stuff up there together now, but 
I told him that it was a short notice and it's going to be $250 and there ain't going to be no refunds because you're not about to say that I didn't finish the, the job in time. But I told him that I would finish it. But William started harassing me. He started blowing my phone up. Is it done yet? What, how long is it going to be? Girl, I need this. It's coming up. I need this. I took it off of our friendship, right, to do it for him. And I told him, let me finish the work that I am doing and I will get to you. At that time, I was working on a story with a family whose child had been killed unjustly by law enforcement officers. Okay. And I said, but I will get it done if you allow me to finish this. I can't do my work and finish it and answer your phone call and deal with your threats and your harassment if you know you don't let me get my stuff done so I could get on your stuff. So he kept calling, blowing up my phone, testing me, just like he was just trying to force me to, to, to get the job done right then, right then, right then. And I said, no, I'm not doing it. You can go find somebody else and it's no refund. So you was aware, no refunds. You're not getting no $250 back. I don't care if you go live tomorrow and talk about it. You're not getting it. On the other hand, the situation with me and King Jives was a middleman. Okay. Me and King Jives had a situation. Now, let me back up. Let me back up. The reason why me and uh, William, you know, went through that situation and we came back and we talked and we worked everything out and we became friends again is because it was not a public dispute. Uh, William did not go live on me. I did not go live and to respond to him. It was something that happened in private. Now, me and King Jive's stuff did spill over into the public, but it was never no problem privately. It was Jabba the Hutt being the middleman, going back and saying stuff to Jive's that I did not say and going over there saying uh, to Jive saying stuff that I said to Jive's that I did not say. So Jabba the Hutt was the middleman. He was the person who had mess going on and it was over some money where Jabba the Hutt came up with this story that me and Jives was on someone's channel. Well, that me and Jives was on a panel together. I don't know if it was Jives channel or my channel, but we was on a panel together and that someone sent Jive some money and Jive was supposed to split it up. And I'm like, well, if we're both on the same uh, platform, I have my cash app up. You have your cash app up. So why would they want to send, you know, money to you and tell you to send me my part and instead of them just sending me mines? So we me and Jives talk and we are we we are cool. Okay. So, but Jives don't have no allegations of pedophilia against him, right? He is someone who blog and talk and 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 give his commentary on different things that's going on in the church, in the world, pop culture, whatever he does. But with Larry is the fact that a man came out and said that Larry Reed, when he was 15 years old in Fayetteville, North Carolina, in Raleigh, North Carolina, allegedly molested him. And you have Larry Reed on an audio recording saying that Shamako told me to come to you because you're good at stuff like this. And then uh, uh, Vincent is telling him, like, that admission right now there will not stand up in court. And it's like, um, me, it's a difference when you're accused of something and you ain't, there ain't no proof of nothing. You get what I'm saying? It's the fact that I just, it's not that I'm moving funny, William. It's not that, you know, I don't, it's just that I'm finding out who you are. And had I known that in the beginning, beginning, I would not have done that. I, I look at William McRae as someone who has journalistic skills. Just because you take pictures with celebrities does not mean that you are above the next content creator. Because you really have to examine the stuff that these people be saying when they say nobody can do it like me or this and that. But you have no platform other than Facebook that don't get any views. And so. I felt disrespected and I felt slighted when I offered to um, 
extended an invitation for him to come up here and he shot that shady text message back to me. So if I be shady tonight, because I didn't want to be shady, but it's just, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to be associated with that stuff you and Larry Reed got going on. So I'm a, you know, slide myself on over here to the right. And my conscience just won't let me not say something. I have to say what's right. And the right thing to say was, is that Larry Reed offered William McCray money to go after Vincent about Vincent's drug use and everything that Larry was going to provide to uh, William to go after uh, Vincent. That's why William got up there and did that video. But I did not know about him doing that video where, you know, after Vincent dropped that video, William came out in a way that he wanted to give Larry Reed the benefit of the doubt. It was not because he wanted to give Larry Reed the benefit of the doubt or get down to the truth or find the truth. It was the fact that Larry Reed offered William money and William needs the money bad. It's been many times that I've tried to go to him with stories and he asked me, do you want a story or do you want money? I've already been to jail for extortion for something that I did not do. So I'm not about to get caught up in these games and I, that's just not me. So my integrity will not allow me to do that. And I'm not going to associate myself with someone who has been accused of pedophilia. This is not someone who is anonymous. This is a man who has put his name and his face to it, as William McCray say, right? And he has come out and he has been telling the same consistent story since he came out. And Larry wants bloggers to interview him and give them the questions to ask. And when I watched the video that William did, I was shocked because he stated that he don't like it when people be with people and be friends with people and hang out with people. And, 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 and then when stuff don't go their way, he run, they run and want to come and expose them. But that's the same way or those are the same stories that you, William, built your platform off of. You built your platform off of disgruntled church members who you call the obnoxious street committee that sends you stories about these down low pastors and the things that they are doing. And everything that he said was hypocritical. And it was just not right. And then he said that he wanted to give Vincent an opportunity to give his side of the story. But as a journalist, how can you give Vincent's or get Vincent's side of the story and report on it if you've already taken Larry's side and responded and reported that side of the story? Do you really think that Vincent is going to sit down with you and talk to you? Uh, after you sat on a live after getting one side of the story, that's just not journalism. That's not journalism. It's, it's not journalism. That's not how it works. You understand what I'm saying? Now, when all of this stuff with Larry Reed uh, went on, I reached out to Larry Reed to try to bring him on to interview him. And it was going to be hard questions. I have to deal with the fact. Someone has come out and said, you've done these things and let's talk about it. I'm not going to have you pay me $20,000 or offer me $30,000 for you can write questions. The questions were comfortable in this recent interview that he just did with Larry. I was blown away. I could not believe it because it contradicts everything that William McCray has ever reported, everything that he has ever said. And it contradicts the fact. Oh, my gosh. I, you know what? Listen. Who am I to tell y'all? That's not journalism. You got to get both sides of the story depending on what the story is. Now, if you wanted to be the journalist that did not hop on the bandwagon or did not go live, then you should say, okay, let me be neutral. Let me reach out to Larry and then let me reach out to Vincent. Okay? But you can't reach out to Larry and then report everything Larry wants you to report because he's telling you that uh, he going to pay you. Now, in that conversation that me and William had, I'm going to go back there, he did say that 
uh, Larry told him that he was the only blogger that had the integrity for him to do an interview with. And I was like, well, damn, didn't, didn't William say that Carlton Pearson was dead and he wasn't even dead yet, was trying to put the man in the ground, he wasn't even dead. You know, it's just, so I did a little digging and I found some videos that I want to play with y'all. So go get y'all some, go get y'all a couple of snacks because I want to show y'all how contradicting William McRae is and how he has uh, tarnished his credibility and his integrity as a journalist, because that's what he likes to say. And let me say this. It's not hard for anybody to go to the NBA games to get press passes. All you have to do is have a certain amount of following, you know, sing, send them uh, your, your, your social media numbers and stuff and write a nice letter and you can get it in. William's been going to these things for so long that he's built a reputation of someone who has been viral in, a, in, a, in, a, in stories. You know, uh, the Eddie Long story, that's the only story that I know he's actually went viral over of compared to my resume. You know, I'm just saying. Um, but at the end of the day, these videos I'm about to play are surrounded around all of this stuff. In the first video, you're going to hear William McRae, who loves to talk about the Bible all the time. And he says, and see, it wouldn't even got dirty like this had he not responded smart back to me. But I feel like that I have, you know, the right and the conscience to tell the truth. I got to tell the truth. I got to just say, I don't feel right with that because me and William already knew what Larry was doing with Jabba the Hutt, but they are not big enough. Their platforms are not big enough for anyone to sit there and listen to them talk for hours. You understand what I'm saying? And that's no shade, no tea. But you have bloggers who platforms are big. They have good followers that people are going to sit there and listen to. But I was just taken back when he told me that Larry said that he was the person who had the most integrity and that he had a platform that he can get it out. Yes, is going to get out because we are shocked at the fact that you have talked about Larry Reed, dogged this man out like a doll, and you up here talking with him. Of course, that's going to get traction. That's going to get views because we're looking to see how big of a fool that you have been. Now, this first video that I'm about to put up here is a video of William McCray um, from last year um, when he was speaking about he don't go back. Once he's cut you off or they've fallen out, he don't go back. He won't go back to you. He won't call you no more. And he said that's the problem that a lot of us have. I just want y'all to hear this. And then we're going to get to the Larry Reed stuff because this all ties into it. The point that I'm proving with this video is the fact that you can't trust him and what he says. You know, just that's, that's all I'm saying. So, this first video I'm going to put up here is that one. And the other ones are from YouTube that I got the timestamps on. Um, but I wanted to give you guys a little background about, you know, how, all of, how we come to where we are. You know what I'm saying? If you're friends with me and allegations come out about you inappropriately touching a child or anybody and there is proof. I'm not dealing with you. Now, if there are allegations and there are no proof, there's no proof, then, you know, we'll figure out what's going on. But to know that someone is a pedophile and to know that someone has touched a child and to call yourself a journalist and to expose every other preacher who's been accused of the same thing without any evidence to defend a person like Larry Reed, who there is evidence up against. I just find that very, very weird. I find it very weird. And I find it very strange that William would put his credibility and everything that he stands for on the line for a check that he's going to use to not get him somewhere to stay, but on clothes and suits and hats. Okay, the video is coming. Give me a minute, y'all. Shout out to everybody that's tuning in on tonight. 
And I, I just got to thank you so much, Kedra. I thank you, Miss. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And this is just how I do my stories and how I break the stuff. I want y'all to understand what's going on. I want y'all to understand. Okay, hold on, y'all. Let me put this video up here so we can get this first video up here because I want y'all to see. And then we're going to get on to what we get. This just right here is just going to set the, uh, the foundation for where we are going on tonight. Look at your neighbor and say, where are we going tonight, Gerald? All right, let's get it that I wasn't going to do the show anymore because he owed me money and I didn't think he should continue to go further and further in the hole. So instead of paying me, he thought, or so he thought that he was going to kill two birds with one stone. He was going to have Larry come on and Larry pay. Listen, y'all. With the time slot, which he did, which he which he did, and then that went on until uh, Dion eventually lost the station, probably in less than ninety to uh, in less than uh, sixty to ninety days. They went cur they they uh, they folded. When you do things wrong. When you do things wrong, I want y'all to get on here and I want y'all to share this live. Now, before we get started, because Larry finna, I mean, not Larry, but William finna and tell y'all, listen, he finna tell y'all that he's about to contradict himself. But let me give y'all the date on this video. This video was one year ago. It was on January 19, 2023. Shout out to Miss Underscore. She has the video. Shout out to you, Miss Underscore. Y'all go check Miss Underscore channel out. Here we go. I want you to share the live. So when you do things, let me tell you something. The Bible says, cast your bread upon the water that it might return to you in not many days hence. Am I talking right? What you dish out. It's gonna come up. So that was the that was the first strategic or what could be considered to be a strategic move. Um I don't I don't I I don't believe in going backwards in life. I don't go backwards. The Bible says that the Lord takes no pleasure in a drawback spirit. I don't go backwards. Everything we press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling. Some of y'all, the problem that some of y'all have is that when you find out that a relationship or a situation or a person is no good, y'all go back. Y'all like the dog in the Bible that goes back to his vomit. Y'all go back and lap it up, lick it up. And the same thing that made you stick. I, I don't do that. I don't, I don't, I don't go back. If we fall out, that's it. If we, if, if, if we have a breach or an impasse, that's it. I'm not going back. You know, I'm not going to be up in your face and, Ooh, I forgive you. And according to that interview you just did with Larry Reed live, the lie detector determined. That was a lie. All of that, no. Now, some people and this sometimes was a lie. in some circumstances, you will still have some level of contact, some some level of um, relationship. In certain situations and certain people, that it you it, it it's very difficult or almost impossible to totally cut them off. Are y'all sharing this? I want y'all to share it. I know that it's late. I'm in what central stand. I'm in central standard time. The more that I 
um, the more that I think about it, the more that I go back into the recesses of my mind and recall the better I put together what he what he did starting um some time ago. Um And it was it was very much diabolical. Greetings, Derek Lashawn Higgs is on. Hey, Harcel, Mother Harcel. He said he was thanking for how he treated you. Um, don't blame you for. <laughs> uh, so let me say this to you. So the thing. Okay, so that was it. Okay, so you all heard. William McRae says that when you have a fall, when he have a falling out with you, it ain't no going back. Use scripture and all, the Bible and all. When you breach it, ain't go see that's y'all problem. Y'all go back. Once you cut him off, y'all heard him. Okay, let me get my time stamps together. We ain't done. So this next video I'm about to show you is William McRae. I'm talking about how Larry and I believe Ernest Pugh and Vincent were colluding to take down his WordPress website. Now, if you do remember, um, um, recently when Vincent did a question and a Q and a about why now on exposing Larry Reed, um, I had put in there, uh, and him and William was having conversation. He, William was in the chat. He was on live going back about, him taking William's website, but William don't care about Larry Reed also because William talked to me. And one of the reasons why he wanted to go after Vincent for Larry was because he was like, Gerald, you know, this man took my website, my livelihood down and he won't give me my files back. And I kept telling him, I was like, well, Larry was doing the same thing. He was in cahoots with uh vincent but can't nobody tell you the story of what larry did to william mccray like william mccray can tell you from january 2023 a year later they back friends they back together after this man done you know was in cahoots and uh you know you felt like that you know, every you know, Ernest Pugh and all of them was trying to get your website taken down. You gonna hear it. Make sure y'all share the live, um, and make sure that you all, uh, yeah, thumbs up the video. Okay, so we are gonna go to the next video now. Y'all got to watch this so all of this stuff make um, sense to you, and then you know I'm gonna get my little thoughts at the end of the end of the live. Okay, so the first, okay, this, okay, the first clip I need to go to. Okay, let me see. Let me get this together. See, I do research. Okay. I'm a research. I remember things. That's how it's so easy for me to find it. Cause I remember when it said, you know, I might not always remember the date, but trust and believe I'm gonna find it. And we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna deal with it. Okay. So let me go to share screen. Okay. It was on this one. And like I said, shout out to Miss Underscore. Okay. She got a video up called William McCray destroyed Larry Reed. It's from January 19, 2023. Okay. So let me go ahead and play this video. Okay, about this Ernest Pugh and Larry Reed and Vincent, you know, all in cahoots to take down William's uh, website. Now, William is very passionate about his website because that was his bread and his butter. It was a website full of porn. And, uh, you know, but, you know, he says he was making he was getting over a million views and that, you know, he was making money and that was his livelihood. And he would never forgive anyone for taking down his website. OK, um, so let's play this video now. It's it's about uh, a five, about. Mm, oh, maybe seven, eight minutes, but make sure you got your snacks. So William McCray can tell you how the story went and then we're going to go to the next video and then the next video. And then, you know. Here we go. Oh no. So what he would do, uh, and I'm getting to that. 
because he had that dope addict faggot trash. Uh, hold on. Man, uh, running around talking, and he hold wants on, yeah. to what kind of bitch he is. Hey, let me see. He's a he's on drugs, and uh, he lives in a house with all kind of homeless. But what kind of pa- self respecting pastor would want to be aligned with somebody like that? All right hey. now. The, uh, so let me let me go Here into we go. this. Let me go into this. So um I did and I've done several stories because I can't stand Ernest Pugh. And he's a sleaze bag, fag, homosexual. Um that's not that's that is no good. I've been doing stories on him since so when he was fat and living in uh Washington, DC when he got ran up out of there. Um, so I did the story or did another story on Ernest. Unbeknowing to me, Larry was working with Ernest and his manager and coaching them on how to possibly or when they attempted to get WordPress to take my blog down. Larry was calling me, talking like he was trying to uh, negotiate some kind of terms and some kind of, you know, uh, peaceful way um, with us and and, uh, with, with Ernest, which I was in no kind of way interested in. So WordPress um, emailed me and said that I had some strikes um, against uh, <clears throat> against my blog and that I had a week to secure my files um, because they were going to take the they were going to take the blog now. All of the time, the emails and the reports listen went back to Larry. Oh, did they? I didn't know that at the time. So, because we had had some type of mutual, um, cordial uh, relationship, <clears throat> I called him. And um, the second time, this is the second time I went to his house over there on Roxbury Road. The first time he was still dealing with Vincent Terrell Hill, who's a total and complete sleazebag. And I think he does cocaine now too when I got him fired from AIB. Um, I think he was doing uh, cocaine. So, um, the first time I did an interview with the both of them over on Roxbury Road, that was when he was living in the first building. And then when whatever happened with that building, then he came out of that high rise and he moved into uh, a, a cheaper apartment across the street. So... I went and he was like, oh, well, let's do an interview about it. So I went over there and that was the second time that I that I had gone to his house. And we did the, um, he spoke to me about the situation with, with Ernest. So while I was there, he suggested that I use uh, Vince to pull the files. Now, some of you may say, well, why would I do that? When you sometimes are in the heat of a crisis, you don't necessarily make the solid and the best decisions that you would ordinarily make if you if, if those circumstances mm-hmm. was not the case. Do you do you understand what I'm saying? 
So it was it was like, okay, it, you're in a crisis. This guy uh, can do it. Let's just hurry up and get it done. Mm-hmm. Not knowing that he was going to eventually mm-hmm. try to hijack the site and shut me down mm-hmm. for Larry. All right. Let me stop it. Let me stop it. Hold on. Let me let me clear my throat. Mm, 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 mm. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Let me clear my throat. So, Larry Reed, not only did you say, William G. McCray the third, I'm not just television, that you weren't going to go back to people that done crossed you and you done fell out with and all of this stuff and all of this stuff. But you also got online last year in January. You couldn't even hold on a year. You couldn't even keep your word for a year. And you a journalist and you got credibility and in- wait, integrity. Oh, no. So not only that, but Vincent was sent by Larry or Larry referred you to Vincent. And you found out you woke up and found out. That it was the day of the week it was. It was the time that it was. And that Larry or Vincent was taking your site down for Larry Reed Live. You said it out your own mouth, sir. This is what you said, William. So do we really, can we really trust anything that you say or anything that you report on as the truth? I don't know. The people going to decide. I'm just playing the video. See, y'all words testify against y'all. See, when you know who you are, you know what you said and you know what you didn't say. You know some shit that somebody can say, Gerald said that. And people be like, yeah, he said that. But then it's some shit that people say, Gerald said. be like, nah, that ain't Gerald right there. And I can say, I ain't never said that. And you need to go find the video and pull it on up. Okay. But it's what he said. He didn't know. Little did he know. Little did you know. Little did you know. Little did you know. (laughs) That didn't, that wasn't apparent to me right then. Um, And so it later, it later, you know, came full circle. Um, and so I'll be going into further. Um, so what was the outcome? Um, the outcome was I still have my site and I'm still standing. Um, e- even though, you know, they attempted to uh, to uh, try that. What he was trying to do and the reason that he was paying other bloggers to, you know, say all of these, make all of these horrible and disparaging remarks. Of- now you heard him, Larry paying all of these bloggers and stuff like this, right? We've been knew that. But now Larry Reed, okay? Now let me say this. I don't know to this day if Larry has exchanged any money with William. I can't say that, but I can say that the reason why William McCray is going hard for Larry against Vincent or whoever Larry pays him to go after, that's all I can show you. I don't know if they exchange money, but I can tell you that the reason why he's going after, uh, you know, Vincent or going hard for Larry is because he told me, William McCray told me that Larry offered him to pay um, him to go after Vincent. And he at, he called me and asked me my input. But I can't say for sure if Larry has already paid William. All I can say is, is that uh, Larry offered to pay him. But, you know, according to the evidence, it seems like money may have been exchanged. You know, hopefully, you know, Larry be able to get him a place like he did Lester Peltier. Uh, but let me go on about me what he was trying to do he wanted to be or to try to become the voice I had started this whole Mm -hmm. black church blogging thing and he he wanted to um, be 
the, I guess, the top guy or or what have you, which matters not because I, I'm in a class all by myself. So there's no competition here because can't nobody compete with me because I'm in a league all alone. You're absolutely right. We cannot comp compete with someone that don't have integrity when we have it. We cannot compete with somebody that sells their morals for money when we have morals. You are absolutely right, William McCray. We are all in different lanes. And I know a couple of bloggers. We ain't in no lane that you in. You know, I'm not, you know, about to stand up for no, uh, for no, uh, you know, no pedophile or someone that I believe is a pedophile. And, um, you know, I'm definitely not about to call nobody and tell them to give me some money or the story going up. That's just not me. So you are absolutely right. We are in different lanes. That, 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 that I, that I created. It's no one else like me. It's no, it, um, uh, it's, it's no one else that, that, and see the thing at the end of the day, whether you try to shut the site down, as long as I have life, as long as I have life and breath in my body, no one can touch the, my level of, of, of uh, intelligence and style and ability to deliver and cover a story no one no one does this um with the effectiveness and the class that i do no no one has that ability that's just that's that's just a a, a god-given um gift in fact no one no, no, no one does not does not even have the ability to come close to execute the way that I do, and that's just the truth. Um, and so, I was I didn't catch it. I didn't catch it right then. When I caught it, is when we discovered that he took a ten thousand dollar payoff from E. Dewey Smith. And I told y'all, I reported on it, and then immediately he went into trying to attack me and trying to attempt to ruin my credibility. And that's when he had that faggot, sleeves bag, dope, dope boy, tramp, trollop, uh, that's supposed to have something called Conscious TV or the faggot's name is Darion. And I tell you, if I ever see him in person, if I ever see him, he, he better kill me. All right, y'all. So that was basically him giving y'all the backstory about how his website got taken down. So um I knew that Larry had something to do with it. But William kept on trying to put it all on Vincent after he got that call from Larry that he'll pay him to go after Vincent. Um so now we get to the good part. The part I like that we want to hear. This is the part about William McCray talking about the allegations. Now, this video is from last year. This is William talking about the allegations against Larry Reed. And I want you to think about this. Everything that he's saying, I want you to think about it and ask yourself, is this the same person that said this last year? And the person that was just live. Back in February and just the other day with Reed trying to defend him. You're going to be like, is this the same person it is? I came to let you know on tonight. I came to confirm. This is your confirmation that it is. Okay, let me see. Okay, you, yeah, this y'all confirmation. The baddest blogger, because I know a lot of y'all miss a lot of stuff, so I be wanting to point it out. <laughs> I be want to point it out, point it out. So, okay, so let me see. Let me get it. Let me get it. We're going back to the same video. We had the 40. We're going to go. Let's get it. You know what is in your background. Uh, KT, Fabian, 
uh, Aubrey. It's going to be good. Any of us, we know who we are. We know the things that we have participated in. We know the, the, the good, the bad. You know, and you can lie to everybody, but at the end of the day, you cannot lie to yourself and you can't lie to God. Now he's talking about Larry. You know the real the the real deal and situation with you. Now, I just I asked him on several occasions, was he a homosexual? And if you go back and look at his lives, and if you go back, everything that he has ever discussed and pretty much said about himself has it, it, it's not it's not totally true it's not totally accurate it's not it, it, it it's not totally it's not totally real so then he said that the house that it wasn't even a house where the, the 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 molestations allegedly took place. See, all of this now he's saying, or now he's coming out the uh, out of the closet and backpedaling, and 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 now saying that he uh, that he is gay, or that he has had sexual uh, affairs. I don't I don't know. To what extent, um, I'm not sure to what extent that this will go. I, I'm, I'm really not. I think now that we have names and we have faces, I knew who the guys were. I wasn't going to pay anybody for any interviews. And um, I was not going to, I don't do uh Throw, uh, throwing rocks and hiding my hand uh, interview. So I wasn't going to ever really do uh, anything as long as they was trying to remain anonymous. Now that they're no longer anonymous and now that they're no longer uh, anonymous um it's it's a more solid um, situation. Just to catch y'all up, so y'all understand what's going on. This is William, okay? This is William talking about Larry Reed and these allegations with all these boys. That done came out on Larry Reed. Now, this is the same person from January of 2023. Okay. This is the same person who is now defending Larry. And I told you why. And Larry not offered that money. William we ain't be doing this. I'm telling you. But. Will it be a situation? Well, you have Harvey Weinstein. Uh, you had Bill Cosby. Um, you know, you had, you know, these other um, celebrities and these other um situation i just i just who else finds it hard to believe that um this man would want to be a blogger and want to talk about people that is trash like him because I, I, I'm, I'm going to say this. Um, 
there, there is something very sick and very dangerous when I, I you know, it, two consenting adults making a decision um, I don't know what's going on tonight. Um, but anyway, two consenting adults making a decision to uh, participate in, you know, um, you know, sexual uh, uh, activities. That's that's two adults. That that's two grown people making that choice, making that decision. Um, but and I think that for us in the black church, and especially for those of us that are Pentecostal, I think I think we harvest a uh we breed an environment for this kind of behavior. What do I mean when I say that? Um, I think that we reverence our leaders perhaps a little too greatly. And in reverencing our leaders um, a little too greatly, we give them the ability to do this kind of um, behavior. See, if I esteem you too highly, then when you are ready, and if you're a predator, and I'm not aware that you're a predator, um, and then you begin to um, manipulate in a very easy way, Oh, he's the bishop. Oh, he's my pastor. So you're able to manipulate a situation and people. And in a strategic form. So these guys like Larry, uh, 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 Larry and like Eddie Long, they were all guys from these, um, you know, these backgrounds, these these situations where, you know, the parents are struggling and they needed somewhere to stay, and you know, you you have all of these extenuating circumstances that breeds and and fosters an ability for this kind of behavior. Um, uh, it breeds a, a way for... Now, do y'all hear this? I just, I, I just want to know, do y'all hear this? Do y'all hear William talking about the same person that he is now defending a year later? William knows these allegations about LeVon Trey. Who would not send them to him? And he's speaking about them a year ago. And now you know that these pastors like Larry Reed do this type of stuff. You know that when these kids don't have fathers in their lives and, you know, the parents are not really watching them and they go into these pastors' house, 
You know, all of this stuff that you're saying out of your mouth, William, you know this stuff about Larry Reed. You just said it in the video a year ago. We playing the video now and you're defending him. You're defending Larry Reed. You're selling your soul for a check that has been given to Larry Reed off of the backs of people that give, in the words of Vincent. I mean, I'm just trying to understand, William, how how can you be this person that Larry go? I don't even want his story. Because I know my questions are going to be hard. I know how to conduct an interview with someone and not disrespect them and, and, and challenge them. This man has stated that you did this. Is this true? Well, why is he saying this? You know, or in William's situation, face the funk. Tell the truth. How can you know this stuff and then still accept a bribe from him or accept some money from him to go after the person that put out the proof, the irrefutable proof? I'm just saying, y'all hear it. Y'all hear it. And then when the money runs out, he's going to be doing the same thing that Vincent, that he claims Vincent doing, coming out, telling all of uh, Larry's T's and all of the stuff he done learned while being in there. That's why you can't tell these people that you meet on the Internet your business. You got to talk to everybody like you being recorded. Remember that. Talk to everybody like you are being recorded. Okay. Let me see where we at on this timestamp. Okay, we got uh, four more minutes to go. And then we're going to get to the other. Way. You to take advantage. It gives you the, the, the ability because you esteem them. You esteem, you esteem them you know, so highly. So, you know, uh, and then people will, you know, will never necessarily believe or or think, oh no, you know, and, and, and then you always have um, a person or a, you know, young person or what have you, that is something going on with their family. Their mom is on drugs. They they needed a place to stay. It's always some kind of extenuating circumstance which creates a breach and allows allows them to and allows the enemy to creep in. Allows them to slip in and, you know, be able to uh, take advantage of those extenuating circumstances. So I just find it very difficult to comprehend that Larry would want to enter the business of exposing uh, people that do the same things that he has done. My Lord. And you just heard William McCray. And you know what, Ratchet? No, sister, I don't believe he forgot these, these videos. It's money. William McCray needs money. That's all. It's no shade, no tea. I, he, I'm just being honest. I've already laid my foundation down for y'all that's coming in here. You know, I offered William to come up tonight. He could have been part of this conversation because I would have played the same things to him and asked him. So, William, what, 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 what is this? Uh, uh-uh, wake up, sis. What is, what is, what is, what is this? You know what I'm saying? So, we trying to figure out what's going on here, McCray. So I watched the I watched bits and pieces of of the interview. 
Um, and I think it's interesting. I I think that, and then, see, this is the problem in my frustration. I told every artist, I told every single artist when he had that thing down at the Hyatt, I I tag I did a post and a story. I tagged Vicky Winans, I tagged Carlton Pearson, everybody that was uh uh Ty uh Tribbett, <coughs> um Kevin Lemons, everyone that went. Am I talking right, Chris? Did did I not did we not didn't you come on? Chris came on and he said, William. He said it has been the pandemic, and he said those people are going to go, and they're going to get that check in spite of. And so I told Chris, I said, no, do you really think so? And not one canceled. Not one. Not one person canceled they wanted they wanted though that that money so they aligned themselves and they turned the other way and they looked the other way on on someone now the only thing that gives gives them some level is that at that time none of the guys wanted to come forward None of the guys wanted their face and their names out there. Now, whatever has changed and transpired now, and I'm going to tell y'all something. Just like I told, I told somebody, I told Johnson tonight, I'm not going to play. I'm going to call you out in your face. Guy Johnson from LA what? tried to um, lie and play games. Y'all stop playing games with folks' lives. Stop playing. Stop. Stop playing games. Okay, so I'm so disappointed in William. I'm so disappointed in William. I never knew that William would be the ter- the type of person to cover up or try to cover up pedophilia involving someone who was a child. And Levantre is running around here trying to get his justice. And Larry just continue on trying to stop and muddle the water. He knows who would take money to cover for him. If somebody came to you and said, I'll give you, because listen, that's what Vincent said. Vincent Terrell Hill said that uh, Larry Reed pays his boy's toys, his boy toys to be quiet. He has to pay people to be quiet. This business going to run him dry sooner or later. Sooner or later. But he probably got it in his will that the money going to still go to them so they can stay quiet years after he's gone. Who knows? But I did not, and I immediately called William. He didn't pick up. I sent him a text message. Um, I thought about it. I prayed about it. And you can't talk about everybody else, Gerald, and give your thoughts on their interviews and not this one. I was shocked and taken back. So that video I just played to y'all was from last year in January, okay? Now this next, let me get my time stamp. Hold on. This next video I'm going to play is from this year. This was the video that uh, William had made uh, in February last month uh, in regards uh, to these allegations that Vincent Terrell Hill put out on Larry Reed. So let me go back. I know I'm how to start it. Okay, let me see. Hold on. Okay, let me see. Share screen. 
Okay. And this uh, video is courtesy of Phase Captain Quarter. So y'all make sure y'all go check out Phase Captain Quarter. All right. Here we go for this video. I'm still fully dressed. Now, let me tell you what this video is. This is basically the video of what I talked about earlier, you know, where William says, you know, he don't like it when people, um, you know, throw rocks and hide their hands, basically. You know, you've been, you with the pastor, you like the pastor, you like the person, then when something happens, you want to run to the blog. But this is how he built his entire career as a black church blogger by taking the stories of disgruntled, not always, but taking the story from mainly disgruntled church members or people who still in the church that just, you know, is amongst the clique that get a lot of tea. You know, you know how people be connected to somebody that got that know everything that's going on in the city, everything that's going on in the church, right? So uh, these people were sending this stuff into him. And for him to get up here and try in an effort or in an attempt to defend Larry by saying he don't like. And I, when I do this, that means I want y'all to listen because he's about to say something that I'm pointing out. Okay. So here we go. Oh, this is embarrassing. Um, I I didn't get in. I, I, I thought that I would have been live and finished by now, but I didn't get in touch with, um, um, with Larry until just about an hour or so ago when we was on the phone for about an hour. Uh, so I will, I'm, as I, uh, as I kind of move through this, I have never, I have never liked stories or information brought to me out of a vendetta. And people that have ulterior motives. Now, the information that they may bring, it may very well be true. Okay. It may, it may very well be true. Uh-huh. Uh, but your motive and your intent and um, the spirit behind your attempting to uh uh take somebody down um the the maliciousness in that is problematic for me huh um yes vincent came with receipts yes uh -huh. vincent has exposed uh Okay, uh, Tanya Boxy Bradley says, William, you're a good man because it wasn't, because wasn't it he of the three men that uh, attacked me a while back? Okay, I want to, let's, let's, let's go into that. Let, let's, let's, let's hash it out. Let's deal with it. So, and Larry and I, we discussed it tonight. Um, I was given some information that uh, basically implied or that alleged that Larry had a per, perhaps a, 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 a possible false um, contract with Keon Henderson out of Houston, Texas. Um, and when I got the information and found out that, you know, $10,000 and things of that sort was exchanged, I went public with that. Um, and, you know, Larry was on the, uh, was on my live. He got upset. One of the things that we, that we both agreed on this evening is we never communicated. Um, you're right, Tanya, that whole scenario, that whole situation um, back, uh, what was that, 2018, um, probably would have played out differently had we had some level of communication. Now, 
I'm not going to. There's still some. So. William, William is now saying that. They had opportunity to talk. And that, you know, they 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 should have had a better communication and understanding. But I swear in the video from last year, he said that he finally woke up. So you back sleep again. So he finally woke up. It finally came to him that Larry Reed has set it all up for his website to be taken down. Now, a year later, he over here talking about. Ah, uh, we had to have an understanding and a conversation and we had to talk and that's all. It was just a misunderstanding. William, do you see how contradicting you are? Do you see how inconsistent you are? Do you see how, you know, you have no credibility and no integrity in the things that you stand for? You have no morals. You sold it, you know, for some money. But I'm just saying, you know. I'm just, I, they, it's their words. I ain't, it ain't, I ain't, and it's their words. This is their testimony. Um, you know, there's still some ill feelings. He said things, I said things. Um, people that follow him and that support him, um, said and contributed to some, to some things. Um, and we both, yeah, we, we both went at each other. Um, I don't think what, 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 what I do know for sure, what I do know for sure is that Vincent has a streak in him. Um, not to say that the stuff that he didn't expose is, is true. Um, but he has a, um, sort of a, you know, um, for lack of a better term, evil streak in him and that he is going to get you. Now, what this all stems from, what this all stems from, so that you all will know, is the final payment, the final amount of money that Vincent was owed or uh, entitled to for his work and for the things that he did with Larry has come to a close. They have finally ended. Now, is that, does that give him reason to now that the contractual agreement commitment has ended, does that give him reason? But why does that matter? Why does that matter? Why does it matter about the contract? We already talked about that. We already talked about how Vincent wanted to wait until he got all of his money from Larry before he said something. I don't think it was about the contract. I just think that he he knew when he, when Vincent came up here and said that he didn't know anything about Levantre, I knew it was a lie because it'd been all over social media streets. It was all in these YouTube streets and he knew. I just felt like that. He wanted to stay quiet and not say anything until he got all of his money that Larry had owed him after he had left. This ain't got nothing to do with no contract. You just sat up here and said, you know that the, there may be proof. You know there is proof. You know this person uh, put this out here and said that. But this is what I was telling him on the phone. His basis of attacking Vincent is irrelevant to the fact that this all started over audio recordings of Larry Reed being and meddling in things and saying things. This ain't got nothing to do with no contract. Whether, let, okay, let's just say mm, it got something to do with the contract. 
Okay, let's just say it got something to do with the contract. But that still don't take away from the fact that this man put out irrefutable proof that Larry Reed cannot even get up online and say with a straight face. He want to get a, he he can't even get up online and tell a straight story and repeat it after 2 weeks go by. He can't do it. Because every time he opens up his mouth, he makes himself look guilty and more guilty and more guilty. So he's running to William McCray, who does not have any integrity at all, as we can tell. As you saw, where's the credibility? Where's the integrity? Okay, hold on, y'all. Okay. Now let me go back to the messages. Okay, let's see where I want to start. Okay, let's see. Um, so after he told me, you do not like Larry, but you like Jive. You took $250, never turned it in, played like it was something wrong with your cash out, blah, blah, blah. Okay. My response was, he said, sir, check your attitude and tone with me. My re response was, that's fine. You tried to extort Apostle Cooper and Amir Mays. I should bring them on my show. Speaking on the 250, you reached out to me to have me build you a website for voting on the Kojic election for uh, a few days before the voting started. You harassed me and attempted to force me to stop the important things I was doing to only focus on your website that I told you I could do once I finished my work, which would have been completed in time. The, har oh, excuse me, the harassment stopped once I told you that I was no longer going to do the website because of your harassment. You were also told and aware that there were no refunds, okay? I said, but I will also share this story about the 250 because see, William is the type of person that he would try to go out and say some stuff uh, that he has let go, moved on from, you know, to try to reopen up stuff. So, you know, I always say there's nothing that you can say about me that I haven't already said about myself. I put myself out there. Can't nobody put me out there. I put myself out there. But that's how the story went, okay? And I said, speaking on the King Jive situation, I already told you all about this. I'm just reading the text. I said, the King Jive situation was as a result of a middleman, but you're literally defending a pedophile against allegations that he admitted to on an audio recording. I said, lastly, I am in no way scared of you and no other blogger should be either. Your platform doesn't even touch the light switch for me. To be, to be worried about anything that you have to say. Let's run it. And then I said, and I, then I said a denim. I said, uh, you also didn't see any evidence on Bishop T.D. Jakes, but you ran with it like it was the gospel of Jesus Christ. Don't be so carnally minded that you become spiritually stupid. He says, enjoy. And your meaningless insults in no way moved me. Never have I said that you should be scared of me. And I'm certainly not afraid of you. If you cannot do the site, you should have said so. Now, where's my money? I said, up your ass and around the corner. Now, where are those charges you said that you was going to file on the mirror? May and the picture of Jake's in a pink thong holding a peach cobbler. Lying ass wonder. Get off my phone, you homeless whore. He said, uh, the charges have been filed. Thanks for living up to your old ways. Blessings to you, Gerald. And remember, you contacted me. I have nothing negative or bad to say about you. However, if you feel about me as you do, then that is on you. I said, William, I offered you the opportunity to come up and have the discussion with me. Living up to my old ways, sir. You don't know anything about me. All you can do is repeat what you heard about me, but it would never be facts, just a hate train with people who have nothing on board. I said, I hope at some point in your life you mature and stop doing the things you are doing to people that goes beyond journalism. I said, 
just bring you some bail money when you come to North Carolina in regards to Amir May because they may be arresting you. Anyways, take care. And um, that's all I got to say on that. Thank y'all so much for tuning in tonight on the North Carolina beat. You can catch the replay. It's good. It's juicy. And thank y'all for coming in. I love y'all beat my we about to go live on Facebook in a, like 30 minutes. We're dealing with the church dress scam. Kaylee wants to go live. And she says she got some stuff to say. She said, I got to get some stuff off my chest, girl. I need to go live. So we're going live tonight over there in about, about 9.30ish, okay? So make sure you head over to the Facebook, the North Carolina Beat. Uh, YouTube, we'll be back tonight for our regular show. At seven o'clock tomorrow. So make sure you are in your place and be here. Thank y'all so much for the love. Thank you for the cash apps. If you want to, uh, you know, support it, real independent journalists. People that's going to go research like I did. <laughs> and go through them time stamps like I did. Mm -hmm. You can send your cash app to it's GJ, the CEO. Thank y'all so much to any of those, any of you, excuse me, who have donated tonight. I appreciate your support. Make sure you follow us on Instagram, the North Carolina Beat, right here on YouTube, Facebook, the North Carolina Beat. And make sure you visit the website, the ncbeat.com. And if you have a story that you think the public should know about, send it to me. News tip at the ncbeat.com. Peace.